Hello. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hold on. Now you're going to be able to see me. Hello. <laughs> How are things, Lubby? Good. Good. Where are you? I'm in Texas. In Texas. <laughs> I was very interested that you wanted to meet with me. I love your outfit. Where'd you get that? On Amazon mostly. And oh, my bracelets very... are actually from my grandma's jewelry box. Oh, very, very cool. I have some Vicky stuff I can show you in a little while. Okay. Are we waiting for other people? No, this is just us. Great. And you had some questions, right? Yeah. Okay, go ahead then. So how did you first become interested in Vicky and the Ram family? You know, I'm a little bit like you, I think. I, I find the royals very interesting not not really for their glamorous life but for the fact that we know a lot about them because they were important um they're often written about and and they we have their diaries have been preserved and all their letters and they're often witnesses like like vicky was a witness to bismarck yeah. um I think most of all, I felt like Vicky got a raw deal. And I was interested in kind of remedying that, you know, like showing that she really came, came to her position with a lot of really good intentions. Um, and then things went, went badly, partly because of her personality, but mostly because of the environment she was found in. She found herself in, you yeah. know? Yeah. But how did you become interested in Vicky? Um, I, I first started the Victorian era research 10 years ago. I read about Charlotte Bronte's, the Bronte sisters. And my, my mom, my parents watched a Jane Eyre movie and my mom read the book. And it was like the first not children's fiction book I read. Yeah. So I'm on it's my very worthwhile. I yeah. think it's a very worthwhile study. And it goes on and on. There's so much to learn. <laughs> yeah. So I just started to read about Charlotte Bronte. We read her different books and I started to read her letters and researched one part of her life for about a year and a half, and then I got to a new book of letters and read about the relationship between her and her publisher, George Smith. Right. And just, they, they wanted to get married and stuff, but they don't get to, but. Yeah, but they, you know, you like fiery, I mean, Charlotte Bronte was a very fiery woman. You like that kind yes. of personality, right? Yeah. But then I read about him and all the pub authors he published and his business, George Smith, he had inherited, just inherited his business. It wasn't really a fiction company at the time. Mm -hmm. And his father had died and he found that one of the business partners was stealing money and so he gets this when he's just in his early 20s. And wow. wow. And then mm -hmm. they get the first book that Charlotte Bronte wrote that wasn't published during her lifetime and they refused. No, what's it called? Is it called Villette? The Professor. It's kind the of professor. the one before Villette. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. They refuse it and say they want more of her work. So she sends Jane Eyre and he reads it, or the reader for their company reads it in one day or two days, can't put it down and says he needs to read it. And he does the same thing, read it in a couple of days and pay her to publish and everything. But yeah, 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 yeah. It, it seems to me that your research is very detailed. Um, you caught me out on something that now I'm very ashamed about. You say that Fritz never drank. Is that because he was a Mason? A member? Uh, he was a Mason. No, I've been reading about his reading his diary and 
about the wrongs that Prince Charles of Prussia, his uncle, yeah. played. But he's I don't know how I come. He's the, kind of the villain in my book. So oh, Prince, you think Prince Charles is a villain? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But I haven't, you're so, you're so smart to read Fritz's diaries. This is available in English? Mm, not most of it. I've got two volumes that are in German that I'm working on reading. Your German must be really good. I'm teaching my songs as I go. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just to finish the Bronte stuff and how it linked into my royal stuff. Reading yeah, about... I how did the Bronte stuff link into the yeah. royal stuff? Reading about after she's published, her siblings die, and then she comes to London because how she and her siblings had published under the neutral gender names because they didn't want to be known as women and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so after her sisters die, she's not under that promise to them anymore. Right. And comes to London and stays with the family of her publisher and gets to know he gets known by William Makepeace Thackeray and lots of other authors. Well, it's very exciting for her. Yeah, but brings other authors to his publishing company and stuff. And yeah. then they're, I believe, they're secretly engaged. They didn't get he doesn't married. have a wife. He's not married yet. He's pretty young. He's eight years younger than her. Oh, that's right. You told me. You said, yeah, yeah. So they, but she comes to London three times, and the third time is in 1851. That's the year of the Great Exhibition. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Did you like my description of the Great Exhibition? Yeah. Because I worry that my research is not quite as good as yours. <laughs> but, yeah, so... You know, I, when I was trying to write the novel, I felt like in order to understand what happened to Vicky, you had to understand the way she was brought up. Yeah. And, you know, you saw her at the Great Exhibition. She was kind of so a very confident 10-year-old. And, and then Fritz was really not a very confident person then. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So but, it was funny but, how they... Uh, they, they sort of bonded over that, you know? And he never yeah. forgot her, the little her. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I read about the Great Exhibition and then also Charlotte Bronte had gone to school in Belgium, the, the Latin, the professor based did she on- go to school in, Did she go to work in the school in Belgium after the Great Exhibition? That was earlier, before Early. the, right. years right. earlier, before she was published and stuff. But the school in Belgium is right next to the palace in Belgium. That's Uncle Leopold. Where Uncle Leopold lived. Between... Do you think Charlotte ever saw no. Uncle Leopold walking around? She wrote a letter about seeing the Queen go by in the carriage when she's, because she's there in the year that Queen, first year Queen Victoria comes to Belgium. So yeah. she saw yeah, yeah, her yeah. there. <laughs> Do you saw her like in another country before she saw her in England. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like Charlotte Bronte's novels as much as you like her life story? Yeah, but yeah, Jane Eyre was to me the best just as a story where the others really need to know the background to appreciate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jane Eyre is, I guess, one of my favorite novels. Yeah. I agree. So I can't, and, but the other ones, my daughter goes to Oxford and she's studying English and they were reading Villette as well. But I, I don't know, that's, there's so many good books to read that I'm, I don't think I'm going to get to Villette. Yeah. But, yeah. But, okay, what was I, the second question? Okay. Um, who do you admire most in Queen Victoria's family? <laughs> Well, we'll have to compare notes. Um, you know, I like both Queen Victoria and Albert very much, but I always like the key the best. Um, I also really like Alice. Um, I think maybe I, I can't, I can't, I can't 
cut off Vicky since I wrote a whole book about her. I do love her best, but Alice is my second favorite. And you? So, yeah, Vicky's who I always come back to when I get to even the before end you, of... Even before you read my book, you liked Vicky. Yeah. Yeah, good. Because I've been, I started when I ran out of new information is the Brontes. My parents had watched the Mrs. Brown movie yeah. and my mom asked what was the truth of that story so I searched out yeah, everything. Why you pursue it? That's great, Lovey. It's so everything cool. everything I could about the Queen and John Brown and read the Queen's Scotland Diaries which were published by George Smith's company. Oh, same publisher. Yeah, he got to publish The Queen, <laughs> so that was another link between it. Don't you think it's extraordinary that you can go anywhere you want in the world if you have the money, but you can never go back in time, and that makes me sad. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't it be fun if we could go back in time and meet George Smith? <laughs> yes. Yeah, his memoir is one that I want to read all of someday, but... There's a few chapters of it published, but um, he wrote a memoir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this is so cool. And um, I was going to ask you one, of, but I, you still haven't told me what your favorite yeah. member of the royal, royal family was. So I read about the Queen and John Brown, for, searched all of that out I could for a few months, and then was looking up. I'd been reading like the first third of lots of group biographies of the family, but I'd get overwhelmed when I get to the grandchildren. So yeah, me too. I'm not as interested in the girl. I'm 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 interested in the Kaiser because he's Vicky's son, but yeah. the other grandchildren. Mm. But then I got to looking up the dowries of each of the queen's daughters and granddaughter or daughters and daughters-in-law and got to Marie of Russia and how huge her dowry was compared to the <laughs> others and I went to her father and then read about Alexander the Second, that's her father and the Queen <laughs> when he yeah, was yeah, in yeah. England. When I was reading, I was, didn't realize, um, I, and I, I didn't really, I could have put this in the book, but there was no, no place for it. I didn't realize that I guess was it Arthur, Vicky's younger brother, was married to a Prussian princess, Louisa, yeah. yeah. And that she was the daughter of the very bad Fritz Carl and his wife, Mariana. Yeah, that's part of the story I'm telling. I'm okay, cool. I'm so are you going to tell the story from Fritz's point of view? I switch back and forth, but the first couple chapters, I started with his... Yeah, I actually started it from the older generation's point of view when they're young in the prologue and then the first chapter and it's from Fritz's perspective at the exhibition and then his backstory and then Well, it's going to be so interesting to read, Lovie, and I, you know, I love to write, so, although I think it's very hard. Yeah. Uh, so good luck with all of it. Do you try, do you, do you set yourself a number of words you want to write every day? <laughs> I wrote my book in three months. The other one. The one I've written, yeah. The, the, the one about Fritz is not finished yet. Uh, the one from his perspective. My first book is finished. But it's like, it goes up to when Albert dies, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. From yeah. the exhibition to when Albert dies is the main body plus a couple of flashback parts or whatever. Do you feel that Fritz, do you, do you feel sympathy for Fritz? Do you think, you know, I don't, people described him at the time, the contemporary reports have him as very handsome, but a little dim. What's your take? Yeah. I've been researching his stuff a lot and just when I read different points of view and some people describe him as being so just very 
Well, do you talk to other people down in Texas about Vicky and stuff? Because I'd be happy to host a, a group, a book reading club. If you guys are all well, want to read your book and then my book together, that would know. be fun. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Um, okay. Third are we on the third question? Yeah. So if it's, I've been reading, just finding lots of quotes from memoirs and books from back then, like people who were served at under him in the wars and stuff. That where, must be so interesting, love. Yeah. And where did you get all that stuff? Like General Blumenthal and stuff? <laughs> yeah. Um, where did you find all that stuff? Online, mostly. Yeah. And <laughs> the university library here has a lot of good stuff. Are you living in Austin? Yeah. I get a lot of good books from the university. Yeah. UT yeah, yeah, yeah. library too. Yeah. And in English and German. Wow. Wow. Are but, you going to school now? No. But, yeah, my German, I started, we started to learn German when I was younger, when we went to a juggling event high level juggling event wow a lot of the people because my brother was into that and i did it yeah. too some and but a lot of the people there were from germany and we wanted to really? understand they had come to the states to do this yeah wow the world juggling federation <laughs> but a lot of them were german and we wanted to be able to understand the stuff on facebook and sure um, sure 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 my mom and Brother and I took the first level of a German course then, and then that was a couple of years before I even started the Bronte stuff. And then when I started doing the real stuff, I uh, just memorized the German phrases, looked them up on the translator, and Memorized what they meant, and then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've recently been in contact with a woman in Britain called Katja Hoyer, who wrote a book called Blood and Iron, which is about the unification. It's worth looking at if you can get it. It's only published in Britain at the moment, but you should be able to get... A, you can have it shipped to Texas from Britain. About three years ago, a friend who I do... A lot of the room talks about stuff too. Had bought a German book that's about Wilhelm's engagement and wedding. Oh, it's really? Incredible. Wilhelm of the, the Second Kaiser? Wilhelm yeah. the Second. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. A book about his engagement and wedding, but it has letters from his fiance during their engagement and just some of the legal correspondence and list of her trousseau and everything that I've Fast been working on that. And Vicky I, had supported that marriage, but yeah. then it was not good in the end for Vicky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I started the Duolingo, an online German course that's more reading and translating back and forth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I should do that better German. I've been going through that, and I've gotten to where when I'm typing in stuff from a German book to put in the translator, I will get to a paragraph I can understand and I automatically <laughs> start to translate without thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, sure, so, sure. But Fascinating. Working on Volume of Fritz's Diary in German. Great, it's really worthwhile. Would you like to go to Germany? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, me too. I've been uh, several times, but you know, it's so hard to travel now. My friends in Germany invited me, but I can't go probably until the summertime. We'll have to see. Yeah. Okay, where were we with our question? Okay. okay. Prince Charles of Russia, I said, is the villain of my story. I'm sorry, what did you say? I said, Prince Charles of Russia, I said, is the villain of. My yes, story. he's a villain, and you know, I call him Carl in my book, yeah. and you know, he's there at the wedding acting bad. <laughs> okay, Lovey, I'm going to bring down the things I have to show you about Vicky's life, okay? Hold on.
Okay. So this is a picture uh, that people that that was made about Vicky um, in a print that they probably ran in a magazine, and it says uh, my 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 uh, husband found it, and it says England's pride, Princess Royal, born November twenty first, eighteen forty. You know, it doesn't really look a lot like her. You'll see, it's, you know, yeah. but it's a representation of what she represented, and. Um, I just, I think it's very, I think it's very cute. But even more, I love what my husband found for me this Christmas. And this is a, this is a, uh, a vase uh, that was made for um, Fritz and Vicky's wedding. Yeah. There they are. It says Princess Royal Prince of Prussia at the bottom. And then it has a picture of, you know, London where the wedding's going to take place. So I, I think they're both, and I like to think that Vicky's remembered. Do you think people remember Vicky? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, if people like you keep, keep, um, uh, I'm really happy that I found the Facebook group that you're in because everyone's really interested in things that I'm interested in, and that's nice. Yes. Yes. So. Tell me, what's our next question? I wanted to talk more about just people's opinion of Fritz, like you yeah. said. Well, um, you know, by the time the war 1871 came around, 1870, 1871, he really was a superstar and sort of globally known. Yeah. Um, but he was very clever, and you probably realize this from reading about him. He was very clever always to employ great generals under him. He was somebody who had no problem in admitting that other people, like Blumenthal, might have been a better than him. Yeah. And so he was very much like the f f the public facing, um, uh, you know, personality of the war and the fact that he was a prince and he was married to Queen Victoria's daughter and that he was so good looking and he already was known as Unser Fritz. You know, they kept, he didn't do a lot of actual fighting. You know, they didn't want him to be killed. So, but he was in there with his men and he was a great, you know, he was a great, he remembered people's faces. He had an amazing memory for people's faces. And so people felt that, th that they were recognized by him. And, and so that made him very, very popular. And also he cared about the men. There's an extraordinary, and this became a tradition or it had always been, I guess, a tradition in the Prussian army that the men of the line had great relationships with their officers. And so, in fact, when in World War I, when the Brits would capture German soldiers and the, you know, the privates and the sergeants would say, say to their German counterparts, don't you hate your officers? And, and no, the Germans would say, no, no, we love the officers. They take care of us. They really, they're in it with us. And the that wasn't true in Britain, where there were so many very um, elite people who were officers, and then, you know, the class system was 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 continued in the army in, in Britain in a way that, of course, also in Germany, that there were officers were more likely people of wealth, but there was a camaraderie between the men and the officers that the Brits couldn't and who couldn't uh, couldn't do the same. They were not able to. It wasn't the same tradition, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and just reading stuff about, I got the volume of his diary from that or already translated. Great. It is available in English. What did, you, what did you read that most surprised you in that book? And it just, it talked about the difference of the troops under him and under Fritz Carl. Oh, really? Yeah. And the how men loved him better, right? Yes. yes. But there was the first army, the second army, and the third army that everybody would expect him to be the second army and Fritz Kern, the third army by the Royal Bank, but they're switched. Mm. And there's stuff where they're always doing that, making it confusing whether it's him or Fritz Carl. But do you think Fritz and Fritz Carl liked each other? Mm. No. They were rivals, right? Yes. They're double cousins, which is so I interesting. Know. But the stuff about 
the putting threats over the third army, the some of the South Germans that were anti-oppression yeah. because they would have rebelled under Fritz Curl. They wouldn't have been united. Fascinating, right? Yeah. Yeah. And there's little stories that are funny, like him being at a farmhouse and the people not really knowing who he is and him Fritz? talking about him and Vicky having a farm and stuff. Yeah, and they had a farm the, um, yeah, outside yeah, of Potsdam. The women yeah. just thinking, not knowing who he is, thinking he's just one of the soldiers and saying to give his resp her respects to his wife and <laughs> it was funny as another <laughs> <laughs> for his wife or whatever. What does Fritz say about Vicky in the diaries? It's in stuff like their anniversaries and stuff, it always says so many years of happiness and <laughs> things like that. You know, I think sometimes you know, Fritz was a very patient person. And also I think he felt that Vicky had been forced to give up a lot to come and live in Berlin. Yes. So he always felt slightly in her debt. Um, I've recently uh, met an art historian who um, had the papers of an, art, an artist in Italy, an older man, who she claimed Vicky had an affair with. And I looked at these papers and never, I said, Vicky is too straight to have an affair with a man she's not married to. And, and that Fritz was a good husband in most ways. I mean, he just, he couldn't protect her <coughs> from all the bad stuff that was happening. And also, you know, Bismarck, Bismarck knew that Vicky was smarter than Fritz. So he would, he would sort of aim all his vitriol at Vicky rather than Fritz, because he knew Fritz was a, you know, a, a hero someone many many Prussians loved. One of the things my book goes into is Prince Charles's influence but Prince he, Charles's influence? He's actually behind a lot of the bad stuff. Oh really? Yeah. Is he is he friends with Bismarck? Yeah Bismarck's during I'm doing the part of Fritz's diary right now that's for later than my first book goes, but the next year after Albert dies, let's clear when Bismarck becomes the chancellor, but before he does, but it talks about him being there and being at Geronzo's place <laughs> and, stuff a lot. Um, and it says something in Fritz's diary when Bismarck becomes chancellor about, it says, now Uncle Carl will rule more than ever and oh. stuff like Was that. Uncle Carl um, a, a more forceful person than Fritz? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel sorry for Fritz being around a lot of people who were not very generous. It was not a good family. No. No. Yes. No, 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 no. Yeah, my book will... Tell some stories that are not well known. Some are yeah, things but some are things where I'm reading between the lines what may or may not have been, but what feels true to me. That's that's the novelist's that's yep. a novelist's privilege, Livy Livy, yep. take it. Yes. And stuff what just what Stuff that's not published, but I don't know what is there, but. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so funny. So interesting. Um, and so you're going to be working on that um, uh, in, in next? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have actually written out tables of contents for six books now. <laughs> oh, wow. You're good at outlining. Yeah written my first one, first book, and I had the first, the next two tables of contents, and then I did three more a few days ago. So. 
So. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, I'm very interested in what you have to say about Prince Carl, and I have to go back and check some of that stuff. I am thinking about doing a sequel to my Vicky book. I can't decide because I'm also writing another novel that's not historical, it was sort of historical, set in the United States. And I'd like to prove to myself I can do that. But then I might go back to Vicky or write about Queen Mary, you know, who married George V. Are you interested in Queen Mary at all? Yeah, I do read about father. Yeah, I read the big biography of her that was interesting. Oh, but the one by jo James Pope Hennessy. Yeah. It was good. <laughs> yeah, it was good. And then there was this, the other book, Glimpses of Queen Mary, which was written from his notes. Did you see that? Yeah. I it was very, very funny. It was, yeah, it was <laughs> very different. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, now, I want to make sure, I have to go upstairs in a minute, so I want to make sure I get through all your questions. What's the next one? So... During their engagement, Vicky and Fritz, what you portray it as where there's not much kissing and stuff like that. Yeah, they were not allowed to kiss a lot because Queen Victoria was keeping a hawk eye on a hawk eye on um on Vicky. But I have the diaries of Mary Ponsonby and she talks about how Fritz was like a big enthusiastic puppy dog and he wanted to be right near Vicky all the time and hugging her and stuff and and it was a little overwhelming for Vicky yeah. but you know the wonderful thing I mean I take a lot of liberties in the book and one of the liberties I take is trying to depict their wedding night um which of course is a work of the imagination uh she did say that that was a little bit stumbly to start and then but they had a very successful uh, physical relationships. So yeah. that's part of Vicky's story. So I couldn't leave it out, even though I wrote about it. It probably, you know, made it up. I have my own portrayal of that. <laughs> we do. We'll have to have warring wedding night. <laughs> yeah, it's different than <laughs> yours. <laughs> but it's based on something I came across that just well, some parts are where I just have like one sentence that I take and make a whole thing out of it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's the way to do it. Do you think Fritz had other girlfriends before he knew Vicky? No. no. Yeah, I know about something, but I don't, I don't want to give it away. <laughs> okay, that's great. I look forward to reading yeah. it in your book. Um, Are you going to send me your book when you're finished? Good. I look forward to reading it. Um, there's one part also that I got from the, who was it? Eleanor Stanley, that was another of the Queen's ladies in waiting. Oh, um, I don't have that. Is that a diary that Eleanor Stanley did? Her letters and stuff. Oh, I should, it, should I read them? Are they good? That it talks about one time when Albert's the chaperone, when Vicky and Fitz get to be alone, semi alone together. Oh, really? The Queen's he, he be, uh, Prince Albert lets them stay, be alone together? Yeah, with him in the next room. But oh, it talks the about room. the Queen would do her paperwork when they're in the next room, so she's there, but they get to be sort of alone together, but with her there in the next room. And, and but, here it is, 20 years at court from the correspondence yeah, of one. Eleanor Stanley, maid of honor. But huh. it talks about Albert being the chaperone one time when the queen can't be there and him falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been I nice for Prince and Vicky. I make a scene out of that in my story. <laughs> That'll be great, Olivia. I will look forward to reading that part. <laughs> okay, I think we have time for a couple more questions. Let's get through them. Okay. So 
me think a second. I said this book goes through the when Albert does, so. Vicky's only 21 at the end of my book. <laughs> oh yeah, so you don't go any further either. Because it's hard, you know, her, the second half of her life isn't very, isn't very fun, is it? So it's hard to write about stuff that's not fun. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I'm trying, maybe you have some advice for me because I'm trying to sell more copies of my book. And um, I think that a lot of people are interested in the royal family, but they don't know about my book. And so I'm, you know, I use social media and stuff, but do you have any other ideas for me? I mean, I, I went on the, I, I joined some Facebook groups. Um, but I don't know, Instagram, what do you think? I haven't really used that. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I need to, I'm just getting to that stage. <laughs> yes, you'll see, after you write a book, then you have to sell it. Yeah. <laughs> It's very tiresome. I much prefer writing to selling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got. Well, why don't we do this? I'm sorry. What did you say? I've got my book cover and everything. Oh, you do? Can you show it to me? I've got my website just has a one picture, but therivalcourt.com. Oh yeah. Okay, I'll look it up. The rivals court and and. In your um, no, thought about the rival's court, is, is it Prince Carl versus Fritz? Yeah. That's a really great angle. Yeah, that is the story I'm telling. And what you said about Arthur marrying a fashion princess, what's when who's Prince Charles's granddaughter? Yeah, he's Prince, so. Charles, uh, Car Prince Carl's granddaughter. That's right, I forgot that. Yeah. So. So in your in your in your book, Fritz is like the good person, and and Prince Carl is the baddie. Yes, and yeah. Fritz Carl. And yeah. if um, if Fritz had died before he got married, yeah. would Fritz Carl have been the heir? Yeah, Charles Prince Carl would be the next king after Wilhelm the first, and then Fritz Carl. So yes. Yeah. It's surprising they didn't poison him. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, crazy. Crazy. All right. Well, listen, lovey. I think that we got to the end of our questions, so we should meet up again soon. Um, and I want to um, send me any progress you have, because I, you know, I love talking to you about this. You're the person I think who knows more than me. You know. It's great that you've dedicated yourself to learning so much, but, and you think that my portrait of, of Fritz is okay, but with some flaws. It's yeah. okay, I can take it. Yeah, your book is kind of what pushed me to want to tell my version of my story. That's right, so, that's good. Yeah, I, nope. started, I started writing mine in November of last year, so right after reading yours. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was partly inspired by the, those movies about Victoria, like the one that your parents read, and, and then, of course, The Crown. Do you watch The Crown on TV? No. No. We did look at it, but it was... Yeah. You know, we did um, watch the Victoria one. Yeah. And, you know, you might look out for The Fall of the Eagles. Yeah, which is I've like, seen that. Great. Okay, great. That's very good for you, I think. Yeah. I like Because it's that. very historically accurate. And it tells a lot of different stories, which is yeah. very fascinating, I think. Really, really fascinating. Yeah, yeah and I could do uh, just the Rifle Courts as a good overarching series to do about Oh, yes, it's a great title. How did you come up with it? I don't know. I thought of it at first as a nonfiction idea, but it just worked for when I started doing my story. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love about it. England and Russia and different series with that same. <laughs> yes, it could have, it could be an umbrella title and then you could yeah. do various books underneath it. Yeah, that's well, what I'm thinking. That's a very good idea. Very good. Um, do you ever read any of, um, what is that woman's name who wrote the, se uh, the second Boleyn girl, the other Boleyn girl? Um, oh, let me look it up. 
her, she's written several novels under various umbrellas, but she's interested in the tutors. Um, uh, and you know, you and I are so interested in in um, uh, in um, Victoria, the Victorian era. Don't you think the other Bolin girl? Oh yes, this is. Oh my goodness, Philippa Gregory. Philippa Gregory. Her books are good. They are good. Uh, you might want to look at that. They made it a, other uh, into a movie, but I never saw it. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not really interested in Tudor. I'm really interested in Victoria stuff, yeah, like you. Me too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, listen, I'm very glad to meet you after we corresponded so much. So continue to send me stuff, and we'll have another. I, I love, this is so great. Have you worn that costume before? Just for special and stuff. Yeah. Just does it go to the, does it, it does, does the skirt go to the floor? Yeah. I've got, I've, oh, wow. Oh, I love the sleeves. I've, yeah, I've oh, got. Oh, beautiful. And got, it really suits your figure. I've got a frame for it so I can wear it as a hoop skirt or bustle type. And I've got my, my shoes. Oh, my goodness. Too. Where did you find this dress, lovey? On Amazon. <laughs> Said, you said wow yeah. it's in great condition do you think it was built uh, made as a costume yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i really like it i wonder if vicky as a married woman would have worn something so daring you know yeah. with the shoulders bare it's interesting to think right yeah do you remember later in vicky's diaries she and um, letters to her mother they're very they're both very starchy they're like oh that person is wearing you know <laughs> the dress to cut her. Oh, she goes out with her uh, fiance with no cut, no chaperones. You know, they're only, you know, they get kind of like sisters by the end of their lives. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's very good. You know, I would so much wish to know what Vicky, how close she, Vicky thought I might have come to the way it felt to be her. But of course, I'll never know. Yeah. The, you know, the, such are the trials, but that's why, but I think fiction is good for you and for me because we both like to research, but then there are holes in the story that you can only kind of fill with fiction, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 All right, so you're gonna keep in touch with me? Yes, good. I'm so happy to meet you um, on Zoomy and um, keep writing, okay? The hardest part about being a writer is keeping going. <laughs> okay? So you, you keep in touch with me and I'll send yeah. you some interesting things if I, if I see any more things about Prince Carl. I think he's a very important character. Yeah. We, have to, we have to focus on him. Yes. Okay? My, okay. My, my. Okay, so. yes. yes, and it's a good focus. It's an excellent focus. All right, sweetie, I'll talk to you later. It was very nice to see you in person. Let's do it again, okay? Okay. Okay, bye. Bye.